Crystal ball photography is an impressive and abstract way to do traditional photography. You take a scene that you would typically shoot, often a street scene or a landscape, and you look at it through a crystal ball. So instead of taking a photo of this house, I take a photo of the house through the crystal ball. This will make almost like a miniature globe inside the image and I will also flip the house upside down. It's a very creative effect and it's easy to do. All you need is a crystal ball. I picked this one up off Amazon for I think about 15 or 20 dollars and you can just pop it in your camera bag and get it out whenever you feel like it might be worthwhile using. I see it a lot with street photography and it's a pretty cool effect so I'll show you how it's done. So it's pretty simple you want to take your camera and typically you're going to want to zoom in a little bit so I'm going to zoom into about 45 millimeters here. The reason for this is because if you are too wide angle, you'll find that you're trying to get closer and closer and closer to the crystal ball so that you can get the whole crystal ball in the frame. And you'll struggle to do that because the minimum focal distance is probably about a foot or two away from the camera. That means I can hold my camera like this and focus on the crystal ball but as it gets closer and closer it will no longer focus on the crystal ball and as a result on the house. So to counteract this you basically want to zoom in on that frame. Obviously you can crop this later inside Photoshop or Lightroom but instead it's much more effective to just zoom in on your camera. So the settings I'm using here, I'm shooting outdoors so bright sunny daylight so I've got a very fast shutter speed I think it's about a thousandth of a second here and I'm using a really wide aperture. I'm going to set my aperture to f5 which is going to be the widest it will go at this focal length. That way I know that I'm going to have a blurred background at the sides and everything in the image will be sharp. And then the ISO can be whatever you like it to be, probably outside on a bright and sunny day like this, very very low, 100 ISO. So I'm going to bring up my crystal ball here. Now we're using a diffuser to make it a little bit easier to shoot me, but if you're not using a diffuser and you're trying to hold a crystal ball outside on a sunny day, if it comes with a little stand like this one here, you can expect to get burnt. This effectively works as a magnifying glass and that magnifying glass is going to concentrate the light onto somewhere on your hand. I think we've all been burnt so far today. So what I've done is I've taken a little, um, I guess this is the top for, for, a key, for a teapot or something. And I put that inside and then I can pop that little stand in. It's almost like using an oven glove and I can put the crystal ball on top and I'm going to try and bring it down as much as possible. I'm going to squeeze it so as much of the ball is up as possible and you can expect to crop out your hand a little bit from the top and the bottom later on when you come to edit the photo because there's no way to have zero touch points on this crystal ball. But I think that's a pretty good start. I'm going to squeeze that nice and tight and I'm going to bring up the house. Now my main tip for you here when you're doing the composition for this is to bring the horizon somewhere into the center. So the center of this building should be the center of this crystal ball. Otherwise we're going to get a massive amount of grass if we point down here and if I put it up here I'm going to get a load of sky. You kind of want to have, because you're going to have the background is going to be the right way up and the crystal ball will be upside down, you kind of want them to flip in the middle. So that's why I put it in the center. So I'm going to pull this up now, I'm going to bring it as close to me as possible while still focusing. And I'm going to take the photo. Now that this photo is taken and I'm happy with the result, all I have to do for the maximum effect this is, is I will take it into Lightroom or Photoshop and I will flip the image upside down. That way the house is now the right way up and we still have that creative ball effect and that soft blur in the background. It's a really useful tool and it can create some really interesting abstract landscape photography. Thanks for watching.